the Chase Thomas Podcast for people who have nothing but time to kill. We need a national title. Hmm. And on this tier, we got number three on my rankings, Brian Kelly, and number four, Steve Sarkeesian. So Sarkeesian obviously has a lot of goodwill built up. Beat Alabama, had that great season last year. Made the college football playoff. But Texas fans, <laughs> they got short memories. They they won a national title. It's been about two decades since they had a national title. And they, they that's that's the ultimate goal at Texas. So I think I think he's on the right path. But you know, Texas, I mean, especially with how they're being talked about this year. This is year one in the SEC, and it's pretty much Georgia and Texas kind of at the top in, in most people's eyes. So I mean, this team underachieves, wins eight, nine games. Who knows? Who knows what the people in Texas are going to be uh, saying at the end of the year? So, but I ultimately I like Sarkeesian. I think this Texas team is going to be good this year. But there still is a lot of pressure. You know, it, it's tough to take a team like uh, up into that top ten, top five range. But it's even harder to get them all the way to the top and the national champion to get a national championship. And that's that's all Texas fans want. And then I with with Brian Kelly, I will say Brian Kelly is not unfireable in 2024 like with how awful this defense was a year ago like that was the one one of the only things that i'm like brian kelly is going to bring a floor just going to raise the floor like just to another level that ed ordron was like having these boom or bust type seasons like brian kelly was the ultimate model of consistency at notre dame year in and year out and now he can get lsu level talent this team's winning national titles. Like now we've seen two years, like obviously year one, they went to the SEC championship, even though it was ended up being like a four loss team. That team was mm. good. And maybe they kind of raised the expectations a little quick, but man, they had a Heisman trophy winning quarterback last year with one of the worst defenses in the entire country. Like it, obviously I don't think they rank that low, but the, one of the worst in power five <clears throat> and like that's just inexcusable to me. So with what LSU's actual like, I don't think he's going to be fired, but I think there's there's like a there's a world where you see no improvement and maybe they lose four, three four games. LSU's like this isn't what we signed up for. So I don't know. I'm I'm not predicting he gets fired, but I'm I'm saying he's not unfireable with just kind of how how they just uncharacteristically underachieved a year ago. It's funny, like he had a Heisman quarterback this past year. Um, the offenses have been elite. He's still recruiting at a high level. Um, they're in the blue chip ratio. They There was a thing this offseason that kind of dominated for a while about like the NIL and the defensive line thing because one of the defensive linemen ended up at what? The TCU kid ended up at Oklahoma that they ran on or whatever. And um, that was like something that got headlines like two months ago. Um, in terms of like, is Brian Kelly doing enough um, in the talent acquisition department? But you talk about the defense. He stole one of the best defensive coordinators away from another SEC foe and uh, Baker from Mizzou, who had created a pretty nasty unit up there in Columbia for the last couple of season seasons. So I think that's a check for Brian Kelly where he's adapting, where he's like, OK, we messed up here. And it's never good when like your best defensive player, like the broadcast and everyone's talking about every week is like how you're not using your best player on defense correctly week over week. That's not it's never good, um, especially at a place like uh, LSU. So um, there's games I think where Harold, he was Harold Perkins was invisible last year. Yeah. Uh, and that's just not where you want to be. Um, he's just too good. But I think Baker is going to be an upgrade. So I think the LSU defense is going to be really good. I agree with you that they're in this national title or bus thing where LSU is a different kind of job because they have different expectations. And I think, you know, what's funny too, when we group LSU and Texas together, LSU has a right to have ridiculous expectations. Texas doesn't because LSU's won what three titles in the last 22 years, Matt Green. What is it? Let's see here. Um, they've uh, won in 2003, 2007, 07. and then 2019. Yeah. Three in this century. Texas has won since 1969. Their last three head coaches too. Yeah, but that's the thing. Is like they they have a right to just like swap guys out. There's enough talent in the state of Louisiana. They have the NIL. They have the his. They have the history. They they can go out and find their guys. They they'll stumble their way into the next Nick Saban, whoever, Les Miles, this that and the other. Like they'll find the next guy. They'll find somebody else to come in here and win it at Baton Rouge. They don't need Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly needs LSU 
to win a national title. That was the reason he left Notre Dame, right? It's because he f- thought that there was a ceiling in what you could win at Notre Dame. LSU's like, our ceiling's not going anywhere. Like, <laughs> we don't need Brian yeah. Kelly. Like, we we hired Brian Kelly to bring some stability here, and he's been good, but he hasn't been great. Like, we haven't seen, like, the great just... I mean, beating Alabama in year one was a big win for him. Obviously, having Jane Daniels win the Heisman last year. You lose your OC back to Notre Dame. We'll see what that means for this offense. They promoted from within the co-coordinator thing. Everyone seems to really like Garrett Nussmeyer. Um, a lot of guys, though, in the NFL draft from this past group. We'll see. But I I think you're right in terms of, like, I don't know how many 8-4 and four or even 9-3, and 10-2 and two years are LSU fans going to be okay with where they're like, yeah, we're winning a lot of games. We have a fun offense. It's on the other, but like, we're not really in it where it doesn't feel yeah. like we're close to Georgia. It doesn't feel like we're close to winning a national title. It just feels like we're a really good, consistently really good team. That's not trending towards being that complete LSU juggernaut um, yeah. that can actually run the gauntlet and win a national title. But on the Texas front, like I said, you've won one title since 1969. You know, who should have that is Oklahoma. Oklahoma should have the Texas feel where Oklahoma dominated the big 12. Oklahoma has the prestige. Oklahoma has the title in 2000. They have, um, they've been to the college football playoff multiple times. They've run the big 12. They have, they have been the more consistent that you have the legendary coaches coming out of there. You have the Heisman winners. Oklahoma has been way more of the consistent program over the years than Texas. Texas obviously has the flash, but I'm like, if you have boom or bust title or bust aspirations and you're a Texas fan or you're in the Texas administration, like I understand you were just in the CFP this past year, you're recruiting at a national title level, but y'all need to pump your brakes. Like, I just feel like y'all need to be okay with being really good for a while. Be okay with being where LSU is with Brian Kelly, right? Because you don't have this history. This is the first time y'all been stable for this kind of like, duration in a long time like enjoy this like hey don't be like hey we have to rock the boat or move on from sark if we get bounced in the first round of the cfp like no you've got arch coming in next year you're recruiting at an all-time great level like calm it down like y'all are texas you've never been this consistently on the right track just hang out hang out with the nine and three ten and two for like three to four years and see what happens in the playoff like if you have a boomer well, bus fairness. national title busting in texas you haven't been paying attention to this sport for a really long time and if you're a texas fan with those aspirations i just feel like you're setting yourself up to be extremely disappointed well and in fairness i think if they lose in the first round of the playoff like i don't think there's going to be calls to fire steve sarkeesian but i think it will be like uh i, I i've always compared texas to like england and, and european soccer because mm-hmm. like they invented the damn game right? Like Texas football wasn't invented in Texas, but it might as well have been invented in Texas. Like they, they love to flex their, their muscles about Texas football, but they, you're right. They don't have like the championship trophy cases. Some of those other blue bloods, like they kind of think they do. But, um, I think this could be like, we've kind of talked about in the past, like the best part of this 12 team format is that, you know, the teams that make the playoff, you know, you feel good about your team because they made the playoff and maybe they lost in the second round. Maybe they lost in the first round but you made the playoff like that's something like Brian Kelly, like he could be a beneficiary of that of like, yeah, if LSU finishes ranked 10th next year and they're in a playoff, that feels way different than finishing 10th. Maybe they don't even make the SEC championship uh, in, in a four team format. But yeah, that's why I think there's definitely more pressure on Brian Kelly to like to prove that it's on the right track. Sarkeesian's shown he's on the right track, but but they're going to want that national title. I, who do you think is more likely to be at their school in the next three years, Sark or Kelly? I'm going to say Sark. I think so too. Because I think Texas, man, they might have just, just hit the the jackpot with this NIL and like SEC money now coming in, like all at the right time, like in there, they're, they're on a, had them in a good season coming out of the big 12. Like, uh, they, they might have, uh. They might have struck gold coming to the SEC. I agree. And you know what's funny is that's not even because I think that Brian Kelly's not going to win it big at LSU. I think Brian Kelly could win big at LSU and then like immediately retire where he's like, all right, did it done. All right, we're good. I just needed to prove to myself that I could win a title uh, at uh, with the big dogs with uh, elite talent. Like I could 100% see that, right? Like I just, it's hard yeah. for me to see Brian Kelly 
at Baton Rouge for like seven years. Like, I just, I think that's very unlikely to me. Yeah. I think, I think for him to be there for another three years, there's gotta be like a final four or something like some, some, some sort of like national title contention for sure at LSU. Um, Our next, that brings us to our next tier. The next tier is the national title contenders. This is what, this is. Nicely done, nephew. The Chase Thomas podcast. Hell yeah.